then they're going to go to the River Park where they have the competitions. So everyone is welcome to come and join them. And lastly, on the 18th, the Chamber will be having their annual market days downtown. Now Ministries will also be hosting a health fair. And at 3 o'clock will be the Armed Forces Parade downtown. So hopefully all of y'all can come down that day also. Okay, now we're going to start with old business. Consideration and action to approve the minutes from the regular meeting, April 25th, 2013. <coughs> Proclamation to designate May 27, 2013, Poppy Day. And I'm going to read that proclamation. Whereas the Floresville American Legion Auxiliary Unit 38 adopted the poppy as its memorial flower. And whereas by wearing the poppy, Americans everywhere, and especially in the city of Floresville, can pay tribute to the war dead and the living by assistance to the veterans and their families in time of need. And whereas the Poppy Day program contributions are used solely for the programs of veterans rehabilitation and child welfare in our community and state. And therefore, I, Mayor of the Anagasa of the City of Floresville, Texas, do hereby proclaim May 27, 2013 as Poppy Day. And urge all citizens to recognize and support the Floresville American Legion Auxiliary Unit 38 in our community. Witness my hand and seal the city of Floresville this ninth day of May. Ms. LaJuana. Thank you so much. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, I really would because it's an you opportunity <laughs> to thank everyone for this because this is uh, the poppies are distributed in the community and all this money goes towards our veterans. These poppies are made by our veterans. And so they are distributed. When they're not sold, they're distributed and donations are taken. So we thank you for the city of Floresville for helping us with this project. And we'll be around town the 17th and the 18th and the 24th. So we thank you so much. The 27th, we'll be having an Iwo Jima um, dedication. dedication at the hall. So we want to invite everybody to that. Thank you so much. And if anybody thank does not have their poppy, they have their little can, and you can get a poppy and get it right now. Make a donation. Okay, thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just for the record, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion to approve the proclamation. Oh, before? Uh, designated May 27th. Okay. Coffee. And second by? Second. Okay. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Proclamation to designate the week of May 15th as Police Week. Eric, can I take one? I'd uh, like to say a little something. Mm -hmm. in the week. Uh, I don't have the latest proclamation. Here it is. Okay. The National Police Week is a week to remember those that have fallen in the line of duty and honor the men and women who keep our neighborhood safe, enforce our laws, and respond in times of crisis throughout our city and county. The law enforcement career is important to every citizen, every city and county to keep peace and order. Law enforcement officers put their lives on the line every day to defend the citizens of the community. This, this week is a way to honor their, their commitment to their community and let them know they are appreciated. National Police Week started in 1962 by a joint resolution approved with President Kennedy designating May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day which was a way to honor those officers who have died in the line of duty, also the week that the date falls as police week. 
During the week, thousands of law enforcement officers from around the, the world unite in Washington, D.C. to participate in a number of events to honor those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Wilson County has seen one in, uh, falling in the line of duty, 1986, Sammy Childress, Deputy Sheriff, Wilson County Sheriff's Office. We take the day of May 15th to remember Deputy Childress and all the officers around the, the, the country that have paid the ultimate prices. We thank all officers who wear the badge, police department, county, DPS, for protecting and serving the citizens of our city and the county. Thank you. The Congress and President of the, U the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which May 15th falls as National Police Week. And the members of the Pol uh, Florida Police Department, Wilson County Sheriff's Office, Texas Department of Public Safety, and all law enforcement play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of both the citizens of and visitors of Floresville. And it is important that all citizens know and understand the deputies that, and, and the duties responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency and the members of the Florida Police Department, Wilson County Sheriff's Office, Texas Department of Public Safety, and all law enforcement recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and prop property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by preventing oppression and deception against the weak and the innocent. And whereas the men and women of the Florida Police Department, Wilson County Sheriff's Office, Texas Department of Public Safety and all law enforcement unceasingly provide a vital public service. Therefore, I, Deanna Gaxa, Mayor of the City of Floresville, call upon all citizens of Floresville and all patriotic, civic, and educational organizations to observe the week of May 15th as Police Week so that all of our people may join in commemorating commen law enforcement officers past and present who by their faithful and loyal devotion to their responsibilities have rendered a dedicated service to their communities and in doing so have established for themselves an inviolable and enduring reputation for serving the rights and security of all citizens. I further call upon all citizens of Floresville to observe Wednesday, May the 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers <coughs> who, through the courageous deeds, have made have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in performance of duty and let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of all our fallen heroes. In witness thereof, I, hear, I have here unto my set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Floresville on this day, May the 9th, 2013. May I have a motion on this proclamation? Yes, Mayor. I move to approve your proclamation to designate the week of May 15th as Police Week. Okay, may I have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Castillo and Councilman Rodriguez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. May the motion carries. And I believe we have some of our PD. There's someone from the okay. county.
time, we're going to go to item 2A presentation on proposed use of forceful water towers for installation of broadband internet equipment. Is this First of all, I thank you for even hearing me since I showed up late. I want to thank the mayor and the council members for the opportunity to speak this evening. And thank you, residents, for putting up with my lateness. Uh, glad I found you, because I was trying to figure out where you were. <laughs> uh, a couple years ago, we, we put forth a proposal. And uh, I don't know if, I think I sent the proposal a little bit late to get copies for everybody. Do you have a, is it the same as the, the, the draft of? No, this is March 22, 2012. Water Tower Communication Research. Okay, yeah, then we don't have it. Oh. I have one. I would like to say that. Um, Really, I was going to say in all of my adult life, but really the reality is, is that in all of my life, I've never been anywhere longer than I've been here in Floresville. And that's a really nice thing to say. The uh, military has taken me all over the world, and uh, Floresville welcomed here me, me here in about 2001, and uh, I just stayed. I loved it here. And uh, I intend to stay here for probably as long as I'm here on this earth. Uh, I, the proposal that's before you is very similar to the proposal that we put forth in 2010. And in essence, what it says is that uh, we would like the ability to deliver internet services off from the old tower, uh, the water tower that I believe is still no longer in use behind Sacred Heart, and possibly off uh, the, the tower on B Street. Uh, to deliver internet services to the residents of Floresville and also to uh, deliver voice over IP to the residents of, Sur of Floresville. And probably one of the biggest differences of uh, the voice over IP that we deliver is unlike Verizon, we actually deliver full featured phone services to businesses and residents including caller ID and voicemail and voicemail to email features that are not available with Verizon. And the city has been using our services for about three years now. Um, so we've got the city and the police department, Wilson County News, and several other customers on the voice over IP. Uh, we've got uh, several of the major businesses here in town that are on internet service through Top Gun. Uh, some of you are familiar with our history and some of you are not. Uh, we have been around for a long time. We initially, we sold our first company to uh, Internet America in 2005, and uh, they, some of you have been customers of them since that, and have realized that their customer service has kind of fallen off, and it's kind of why we, we had a splitting of the waves. The towers are instrumental for Top Gun to be able to deliver services to some of these residents, and this is true broadband <coughs> service. The, uh, the analogy or the, the comment that's made that there's no broadband service in Wilson County is false. There's been broadband in Wilson County since 2001. Uh, we would all, including myself, would like it to be on a wire, on a phone line or on Roadrunner or something like that. But the reality of it is that the cost of that is so intensive that most companies will not do it. They have to come in here, they have to put all the cable infrastructure in, and then they have to compete against the people that are already here. And we would like the ability, especially since Stellara has announced that they're um, officially closing business as of April 30th, and Stellara customers are coming in our doors at about four to five a day, wondering what they can do for service. We would like the ability to be one of those that can compete for that business. The proposal that I have before you is to say that, uh, very similar to what we proposed in 2010, <clears throat> that we would 
if the, the city will purchase the equipment, we will place all of the equipment in place to connect the city hall, the convention center, the police department, and the public works so that they're all on one private network, which means that they can share servers, they can have phones that are on the same phone system, that means they can extension dial each other at each location. They can share the internet. For example, I'm not opposed to the city using some, another internet provider. If the city wanted to get, let's say, a Time Warner fiber connection at either the police department or the city hall or the convention center. When we have the buildings networked, that fiber connection could be shared with all city facilities. So the cost reduction is significant and the reliability is significant because your major backbone is in fact fiber. So there's, a, there's an opportunity here where we can work together, top gun can work with the city, and it works to my benefit because we can increase our, our uh, scope of coverage to the residents and to the businesses of Floresville. And at the same time, we can give the city the services that to, will connect the multiple buildings, the multiple facilities on a common internet carrier to use common servers and to use common phone system. Uh, Top Gun is willing to put in all of the equipment, all of the labor would be donated in exchange for the use of the towers, uh, specifically the one behind Sacred Heart is one that's in question right now. and that. Uh, I, I believe the lease agreement says that w what we would like to do is be able to say for three years we get use of that tower. After three years we would start paying lease agreement, actually lease fees on the tower. In light of the fact that uh, if you have not already, you are about to lose revenues from Stellara, I, I'm hoping that the council will see this as a fair opportunity to uh, increase the networking for the, the city hall and the convention center, as well as improve services for the community. And a question. I have, yes. I have, I have just a quick question. You said that you would connect the phones from city hall to the PD convention center and maintenance department. Right now we're already connected with PD because we can call them by the station. That is correct. correct. Okay. You, you are connected right now over a leased line. <clears throat> That's a line that we have put in uh, that uh, allows you to be on the same network for the phone system. After the three years, what would be the ballpark figure about leasing it? The agreement, uh, what, I've, what I've stated in the agreement is what we would be willing to pay is anywhere between $75 and $125 per antenna that we place on the tower. So, and that can actually be monitored. So if we place three antennas on the tower and then we've got that $75 an antenna, you know, that's two and a quarter a month. Hey, Councilor, you wrote quite an extensive piece over the last one. Do you believe that we can overcome the, your objections in a new agreement? I think they could be overcome. I just, this is the first I've seen of this one. Well, as this isn't a consideration in action, but rather a presentation, I would encourage Mr. Mullen to work with city staff and our council to come up with an agreement that can be brought back to this council for approval. I would like to state, for the record, that if I, I'm perfectly willing to entertain that, uh, I, if we are going to entertain that, I would like for your agreements with Internet America to be a part of that because uh, one of the objections during the last meeting was the fact that you could not have a guarantee me uh, frequency and in fact I know that those agreements are in place with Internet America. So I would like the same. You want a reciprocal. I, if, if they're going to be able to have that agreement I would like to be able to have the same agreement. And that, that's, that was the statement of fairness. I, I think that, that, that can be brought about. I think I don't know that you know if you have difficulty in, in that before it comes back to the council. I would like to know about that. But I think between city staff and, and, and our council, we can come up with an agreement that is going to work for you as well as the citizens of this community. Uh, the loss of Stellara. I'm receiving phone calls looking for recommendations as to where we can do this. Uh, I, I will in. in uh, 
full disclosure, say I am a customer of Top Gun. Not the voice over IP, but the internet service. And I've bounced from provider and provider and provider uh, in this community. And the level of service that I get from them is unparalleled to anybody else. And if we can offer that same thing to other residents in this community, with the loss of Stellara, I'm all for doing something. Now, would <clears throat> being that the that this, the police department is, is exercising or trying to to get their ticket writers, would this would you would you think that it'd be working hand on hand with the a Wi-Fi that 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 you can provide for the, the it, police it, department? It could very potentially be. Let me, let me explain another thing. Some of you are not aware that we are the only internet provider in town that is providing free wireless hotspots to citizens and to guests that roll through this city. Uh, we, we own FloresvilleFreeNet.com and people that uh, we're currently delivering downtown, the old Walmart, um, off the uh, Connolly Hospital, uh, We've got eight hot spots throughout the city where somebody can roll up and they can actually get free internet. And the first page they see is Floresville advertisements, the, Floresville, the Wilson County news feed, and they have to use that to be able to get on. So they get some little flavor of what's going on in Floresville. And our intent is to be able to provide that citywide. I'd say that network could be used in the same way you're talking that's about exactly, the Wi-Fi. That's exactly my point. Because once once the network is built in that way, uh, we can provision uh, the uh, the police vehicles so that they have uninhibited access on those networks, and they could in fact have that. And perhaps on, on the VPN as well. The on the VPN network. as well. Yeah. Right. Mr. Mullen, how does this provide um, internet service to residents? Pardon? Residential? Is this for residential to replace Stellara? Because I have Stellara. It is for residential. Uh, our, our business primarily right now is about 75% business, and the remainder is residential. We just started to do residential services. Okay, because you didn't offer it in the first That's, proposal, that right? That is correct. Um, so we are offering it now. We're actually dividing. We have two separate networks. The business is right on one network, and the residential right on another, so they don't affect each other. Do you have an idea of the cost uh, versus Stellara for residents? Yes, the cost is about the same at twice the speed or half the price at the same speed. <laughs> <laughs> our, our residential services start at $24.95 a month, which uh, underneath Texas state law, anything under uh, 25, the first $25 is non-taxable. So say they sign up for $24.95, then that's their bill, $24.95. Their speed of that is about three meg of down, download and one meg of up, which is what most people are getting from Stellara right now, which is about half the price of Stellara. How long are they going to operate? Because I still have Stellara working. Stellara, on their, I think I put a note in there. I think they're facing out. It says 30, it says 30, 30 days. Point. I think it's what they're, they're not guaranteeing anything beyond the 30 days. They're trying to keep live for their customers for that long so they can transition off. Tell me, from my backyard, I look at that pretty tower on B Street. What would it look like after the contractions are up there? That's very important to the... the uh, most of the contractions that I would put up on B Street in particular would be on the handrails. So you would not really see them. It's not like the Stellara. When Stellara came in, they went on the north or the south tower. They put that huge cage and the infrastructure up there, and they put all that contraptions get up there and then they did the same thing with Pope. Most of our stuff is mounted on the handrails so you don't see it in the profile. What is that? I'm sorry, I don't understand that. It's on handrails. You, ha you have a dome. Mm -hmm. You have a dome and the handrails are typically right here. So as you walk around the handrails is where the antennas would be mounted. That's if they were up above on top of the dome, you would see them. Oh. They're not going to add just a silhouette. So no, you're not really going to see them. And it's not going to cover the paws. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is this possible to, to uh, have back to us at our next council meeting? 
When's the next council meeting? Uh, <laughs> is it possible to have a vote? <laughs> well, it's very possible to have a vote. Yes. I mean, it's, I would encourage you to work with city staff it's if that's possible. To have that. <coughs> it would be an issue on our side. So we're two weeks. Not an issue. I would just, you know, add it in there to make sure that it reflects that, that uh, in the contract that uh, <coughs> we'd be willing to to exercise that idea of of the of the. In the PD, yeah, for the PD. Well, it's it's greatly enhanced by the fact that the the network that I'm proposing the, for the city is actually the city's. So there would be no customers riding on that network. It's not a network that I would be using to deliver internet. What I'm saying is, well, I'm going to put this network up for the use of the city in exchange for the use of the real estate for <coughs> the service. So that network is totally yours. So it's is a very easy manner of routing the uh, the police traffic through that, so that they stay completely on that. Um, how 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 big of a radius are you looking at at covering? <clears throat> well, with approximate. If I had both towers, the we could actually cover all of, all of the Floresville city limits, as far as for the use of the police. Okay. I mean, they they would have complete access. And as for residential customers. Residential customers would extend down to probably uh, Bentwood, Shannon Ridge, uh, 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 south end of Poth. Um, so, you know, so we'd get quite a bit of extensive coverage with the use of the towers. When you present this to us, if there are any other costs involved to the city in uh, enabling the Wi-Fi to the police department, I would like to take a look at those. Uh, some detailed costs on the equipment. You estimated here about $2,000. Uh, what additional equipment may be needed as a result of that? Uh, obviously, phone equipment going from a, a landline based system, and forgive my ignorance in the terminology, to a voice over IP system, I think may require some different <coughs> equipment and what those costs would be involved. And if that's something we can transition into and not necessarily do day one, but transition into what kind of cost those would be. Well, you, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, you said that the, the city is originally already, already using the voice over IP. That's right. Right. So, so, te so technically, but not the center or that's the right. shop. Okay. So, so technically, you just have to be adding sure. a couple rather right. than the, the full. Uh, right. That's exactly right. So, so you, let's say just as an example, if you were looking at. Let's say two phones for public works and three phones for the convention center. You'd be looking at about five hundred dollars in equipment cost for the phones. And just be able to present when when you come back to the council on this thing, what those costs are going to be. And, and certainly right. Andy and company would be able to to address whether we have the resources to do those today or when we will have the resources so that we can look at a timeline. Very good. I can do that. Appreciate your time. Can I ask a question? Yes. What about the businesses and res residents that are going to be below the line of sight? How, how are you going to be able to connect the internet to that? Are you going to put uh, an antenna that's going to go 40, 50 feet up so you can be in the line of sight? We have, a, a, we have a different way of uh, networking. Uh, I have been in this wireless business for well, since 1995. And in this city of Floresville, we have a lot of wireless providers. Mm -hmm. And what happens when we typically uh, move to a tower location and then we try to deliver services to all the customers, we end up with issues. And the issues are because we're fighting for frequency with uh, Internet America, with uh, GBC with uh, LB Wi-Fi or ZipLink. So we operate on a different strategy. What we do, I'm kind of giving away some trade secrets here, but I've told them and they don't want to listen to me, so okay. We What we typically do is we come down into an area, a neighborhood area, and we create a dedicated repeater for that neighborhood. And that repeater is connected to my tower. So, and you, if you were a resident, would be connected to that repeater. And what we, when we do that, we're below all the radio frequencies that 
of all the other carriers. So we had, we eliminate a lot of the interference that we would normally have to deal with. <coughs> so we don't usually put up 30 foot poles on houses. I, I'm assuming that's where you were going with yeah. that. Typically where we want it, uh, we usually put up a 10 foot pole or a three foot pole or a little satellite mount because we concentrate it into a, a small area where there's 15, 20 homes that are within that given area that can connect off that repeater. And that eliminates the 30, 40, 50 foot poles that you see on the houses and you see on the businesses which are an eyesore for everybody. Okay. And will you have redundancy? Redundancy in when, what level? If, uh, say, one of your modules on the tower fails and it holds City Hall and the police department, are you going to be able to reroute it so it's still have internet? The uh, redundancy, uh, the, we can build in redundancy to the city network mm -hmm. and as far as the customer side. The, we have a redundancy, that, but it's manually operated right now. So if we have a repeater that goes down, we actually reprogram things so that it, it's not an automatic failover. Okay. I'll ask you more for the businesses sometimes. They call it event center or the department or so. But sometimes they need to operate 24 hours a day. Right. What does the timeline look like once a contract is signed? I'm ready to go tomorrow. Okay, but how long does it take to put it up? <laughs> Have it working? It would take me uh, uh, probably five days. Really? Five days. How many hours do you have working for you? That's me. <laughs> right now, I just lost my installer, so <laughs> so right now it's just me. I got to find a new installer. So if you know anybody looking for a job, <laughs> but I will tell you this: is that uh, we came here in 2001, and the first 300 installs that we did in Wilson County, I did them. So including all the towers. And all the water towers, including Oak, Oak Hills and Pope and Stockdale and Watco Tanks and Sutherland Springs, I did all of those as well. So when I'm motivated, I can move. So um, if I changed over from, I mean, someone who has Stellara today and used your services, are you able to service the rest of them today? I've already moved five customers this week. That we're still our customers. You have a business card and get to my Here's my man, which is over at JP, he's getting fixed, so <laughs> trying to get ready for the rush. Okay. But, I'll give you your number. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Where do you live? Uh, by, the pretty, you. By, the, by the pretty Pauls. By the Pretty Pauls. <laughs> <laughs> the Pretty Pauls in my backyard. I don't cover them. <laughs> middle school. I'm sure we can take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? No, but there's one back there. Oh, yes. I uh, just have this question for the support the city council and mayor. Is this going to turn like a trash business where everything sounds good and they wind up with little trash cans? And I guess what I'm saying is this open for bids for other companies to make bids towards the city? Or is it is a closed deal? It's not a closed deal at any point. Oh, at, 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 at this point, we said contact city staff, work with legal, make sure that we're doing this the right way. If this is something that we have a responsibility to put out for bid, I'm sure council will advise us of that. If this is something that is perfectly acceptable, I'm also confident that council will advise us of it. No decision's been made here tonight. Simply, we've asked Mr. Mullen to work with city staff and our legal counsel to develop a formal proposal for this council to consider. That's all we've done here. Just to, you know, kind of no, I get the yeah, early, bird, early bird gets the worm. I type yeah. of deal. So. I understand, yeah. I'm just saying that there's open for other uh, companies that can also. Yeah, usually when the, when the city actually comes out and requests for services, there is a, an RFIQ request for quote where the city actually has to come out and they actually has to publish it. And I am not coming, the city is not coming to me. I'm coming no. to them and making a proposal for them. Um, and I'm sure those issues will come up during the formal presentation of the topic. Thank you, Mr. Wallen. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. And thank you for hearing me out since I was late. I really appreciate that. Thank you.
Okay, at this time we're going to go on to item 2B, adjourning to executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.071 to receive update from the city attorney on all active, pending, and or threatened litigation. Can I have a motion to enter into executive session? I make a motion to go to executive session. I'll okay. second. Okay, I have a motion by Councilman Rodriguez, second by Councilman Guerrero. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We're going to ask everyone if they could please step outside because this would be our executive session. <laughs>